but prophet are you going to worry yourself to death over them if they do not believe in this message we have adorned the earth with attractive things so that we may test people to find out which of them do best but we shall reduce all this to barren dust prophet do you find the companions in the cave and al rakim so wondrous among all other signs among all our other signs when the young men sought refuge in the cave and said our lord grant us your mercy and find us a good way out of our ordeal i find this dua very very helpful whenever i'm lost or i want to have some guidance i think this is uh, aya number 10 very beautiful dua our lord grant us your mercy and find us a way good way out of our ordeal we sealed their ears with sleep in the cave for years then we woke them so that we could make clear which of the two parties were better able to work out how long they had been there prophet we shall tell you their story as it really was there were young men who believed in their lord and we gave them more and more guidance we gave strength to their hearts when they stood up and said our lord is the lord of heavens and earth we shall never call upon any god other than him for that would be an outrageous thing to do these people of ours have taken god other than him why do they not produce clear evidence about them about the other gods who could be more unjust than someone who makes up lies about god who could be more unjust than the one who makes up lies about god now that you have left such people and what they worshiped instead of god take refuge in the cave your lord will shower his mercy on you and make you an easy way out of your ordeal you could have seen the light of the sun as it rose moving to the right of their cave when it set moving away to the left of them while they lay in the wide spread a uh, wide space inside the cave this is one of god's signs those people uh, god guides are rightly guided but you will find no protector to lead to the right path those he leaves to stray you would have thought they were awake though they lay asleep we turned them over to the right and the left with their dog stretching out its four legs at the entrance if you had seen them you would have turned and run away filled with fear of them in time we woke them and they began to question one another one of them asked how long have you been here and some answered a day or part of a day and then others said your lord knows best how long you have been here one of you go to the city with your silver coins find out where the best food is there and bring some back but be careful not to let anyone know about you if they found if they found you out they would stone you or force you to return to their religion where you would never come to any good in this way we brought them to people's attention so they might know that god's promise of resurrection is true and that there is no doubt about the last hour though people argue among themselves some said construct a building over them their lord knows best about them those who prevail said we shall build a place of worship over them some say the sleepers were three and their dog made four others say they were five the dog made six guessing in the dark and some say they were seven and their dog made the eighth say prophet my lord knows best how many they were only a few have real knowledge about them so do not argue but stick to what is clear and do not ask any of these people about them do not say of anything i will do that tomorrow without adding inshallah god willing and whatever you uh, whenever you forget remember your lord and say may my lord guide me closer to what is right some say the sleeper stayed in their cave for 300 years some add nine more say prophet god knows best how long they stayed his is the knowledge of all that is hidden in the heavens and the earth how well he sees how well he hears and they have no one to protect them other than him he does not allow anyone to share his rule should we finish or should we stop here 
Mm. You want to hear the whole or should we just discuss some lessons from this much? We can discuss some lessons. Okay. So, I've just like done just the beginning of it and there's so many lessons. So many lessons. Mashallah. So, first lesson is What do you what do you understand what would be the first lesson um to always trust in Allah yes and the biggest lesson should be never say anything about Allah that Allah himself doesn't like that it is said that would be i guess the biggest lesson because they in the very beginning people say god has offspring now zubilla that is the biggest thing that is why they left those people who were saying that god has any you know offspring or family or child or anything like that that is a very very monstrous thing monstrous assertion that comes out of their mouths what they say is nothing but lies so the biggest lesson is allah subhanahu wa taala made these people so special because they believed that allah is pure from all these flaws all these things you know he's above and beyond all these things he does not have a family the way we have he loves us he's he created us but he doesn't have any partner there's nothing like him nothing like allah subhanahu wa taala he's just one unique only one and only right and it is a very monstrous thing to say when somebody says that if there is nauzubilla there is a son of god or anything like that that is very monstrous thing to say may allah protect us from ever saying anything like that along with that allah subhanahu wa taala says that it these are nothing but lies like any lie this one or any other lie when you say things that you assume and they are not said by either the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or allah subhanahu wa taala and we don't have any evidence and we claim that oh allah said this that becomes a lie if we speak about the quran with authority not while learning not while learning not in the learning process like in learning process you're humble you're asking questions that's fine But when you start saying with can oh no i know this is in the quran and it is not in the quran it becomes a lie so we cannot claim that this thing or that thing is from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam or it is from allah subhanahu wa taala when it is not and we don't have any proof so we have to be careful when we say something so this is very important that we should not say anything about allah subhanahu wa taala that there is no evidence about it especially if allah subhanahu wa taala and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never said it and never clarified it then we don't need to question we don't need to ask anything that is not clarified we leave it that is when allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned later that there are some are guessing how many were they they were 3 they were 6 they were 9 or this or that and then allah subhanahu wa taala says um they were they stayed this much time in the cave or they stayed that much time does it matter how much they were and how much time they stayed is that important part of the story you know no no do we need those details no are they going to help us in any way um no are the details of their number or the number of years they stayed in the cave is it going to be of any benefit to our iman no no so even if it was one or two or 10 or 20 or they stayed there for 100 years or 1000 years or million years that is in, in not necessary like mm. it's just a very uh, low level of detail like we don't need it for boosting our iman so the main things which this also tells us that we should focus on the important stuff the very big lesson we should always focus on the important stuff these mm-hmm. things shaitan can distract you with these things some people will just keep thinking and searching and might go to you know might start spend a whole day searching for essays and 
uh, oh what does uh, bible say about them what does other scripture say about, what does uh, you know some scholars say about them and they'll keep searching 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 maybe they spend a month on this uh, maybe they spend a few months on this research but when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already mentions in the quran it's not necessary to you for you to find out i mean just imagine there are 100 and more than 125000 um prophets does allah mention them all in the quran no no there are so many angels does allah mention all of them in the quran no 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 every person how many angels do you have in the room right now let's see minimum minimum um yeah we have 10 yeah how okay yeah we have eight sorry oh minimum like minimum two angels per person yeah minimum that's the minimum that's the basic i'm i'm guessing you know more than that it's a lot more because there are many angels protecting us but uh how many minimum mm -hmm. two each yeah So we don't have to be. We, we they're not mentioned in the Quran. If you, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah. So the <laughs> two angels per person, one on the right, one on the left shoulder. They're writing down everything that we are saying and doing, good deeds and bad deeds. So we have angels with us all the time. We have sixteen. Okay, mashallah, mashallah. So just imagine, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala only mentioned. Um, the angel of death did he mention the angel of death in the quran no. by name by name so. yeah, yeah he did by name yeah in one of the surahs i think uh, jibril and mikail are mentioned i think angel of death is not mentioned by name just like he's just mentioned uh by description maybe he's mentioned no, no, and no. by description no, the no. hell angels of hell are mentioned no, also no, by description no. yes malik is mentioned yeah, think, maybe i think it's malik mentioned Malik al Maut, mm. yeah, maybe. Uh, but name, uh, I think his name is Israel, Israel. I think by name is not mentioned. It's Malik al Maut, maybe mentioned. So, so many angels, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't mention them, right? So we have to be very. This is a very important lesson for us to when we do anything in life, we have to focus on the important stuff. It's very important. because often we start wasting our time on things that are not important and then we end up thinking that oh we don't have time for this and we don't have time for that but in reality shaitan is making us waste our time and the person who has the most potential shaitan will try to busy them in the most unnecessary stuff so we have to we have to be very careful you know that uh, sometimes shaitan there is a person Shaitan cannot misguide them to do a major sin. Then what Shaitan can do is the Shaitan can busy you in a task that is less rewarding than the task that is more rewarding that you could be doing at the same time. You know, yeah. smaller smaller good deed than a bigger good deed. You could be doing. You have the potential to be doing a bigger good deed, but Shaitan will busy you in a smaller good deed. so yeah, this is also something is some people shaitan just cannot make them do major sins right so then shaitan will make you stuck uh, get stuck upon something smaller and so that he just you know feels that oh at least they are not doing this big nikki big good deed so consciousness taqwa means that you are always conscious of your actions you are always calculating pros and cons you are always taking note of the action that you are doing is it good is it bad is it excellent am i becoming a sabikun with this am i becoming am i getting distinction am i getting the gold medal with this deed am i getting the bronze medal with this deed or am i just getting pass you know hardly 50 50 so we have um, enough intelligence alhamdulillah allah has given us enough consciousness that we can assess how much like if somebody gives you ice cream you know you know which one is good which one is bad which flavor is best which brand is best which flavor is best you know these yeah, things 
we know and when we see a mango we know which one is better which one is not good we see a watermelon we know which one is good which one is not good so in worldly things we always know what is good what is bad what is medium what is so so you know not so good 50 50 somebody gives you a dress you will know this is cheap this is expensive similarly when you do a deed for allah subhanahu wa taala you should assess when you do salah you should assess did i do a did i do a cheap salah or did i do a very expensive salah like a very proper amazing salah i did today i was focusing i was reciting properly i was um, conscious of my salah so we have to be very careful when we are doing something that we do with a lot of care and love for allah subhanahu wa taala because when you do salah allah subhanahu wa taala says you walk to me i run to you so we don't want to disappoint allah subhanahu wa taala when we walk to him he's running to us and then we disappoint him with a bad salah that's bad right so we have to be very very good in our salah so this is i think we'll stop here and we'll start our and the yeah the last lesson that was so important was that inshallah is something that is mentioned in the quran and whenever we feel like like we make a plan we have to say inshallah this is so important it is mentioned in the quran itself unfortunately unfortunately uh some people you know when you say inshallah too many times and some people start uh, even there are people who don't have a lot of uh, faith they don't know how to stay quiet when god is mentioned or something and they would start um, you know saying things ki why are you saying inshallah so many times you don't have to worry about such people you just say inshallah whenever you make a plan and um, it's so important then if you allah says if you forget to say inshallah then when you remember you have to say a longer dua <laughs> so the dua that you have to say if you forget inshallah is longer than the you know than saying inshallah so it's better to remember always to say inshallah but the other dua is also a blessing for us that if we forget we have to say it but this also shows the importance of saying inshallah we cannot take it lightly chalo now okay okay Are you guys with me? Let's start the drawing now. So, how many? How much time do you guys need? A twenty-minute challenge or a ten-minute challenge? This is getting doesn't look ready. doesn't look very difficult. Let me see it. It doesn't. Thousand minutes. It doesn't. Is it? Doesn't look. Difficult. I think twenty. Oh, okay. nice. Uh, exactly. Maybe twenty. Maybe not too hard. Twenty. Safia and Rukaya, and like you guys are muted. Cool Isn't that very cool flower? Should we start the Should sketching now? Cool yeah. She's just okay. getting the papers. All right, all right. So, what do you understand from uh, the little bit that I just told you about Inshallah and? It is. We just uh, le- learn three lessons today. We just discuss three lessons that we don't say anything about Allah. That we we cannot claim about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala anything without yeah, knowledge. Twenty twenty minutes. Especially if it's uh, not uh, given to us by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot make up anything about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot make up anything about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot make up anything about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot make up anything about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We cannot make up anything about Allah Subhanahu The second lesson was that we do not worry about unimportant stuff. We only focus on the important things, yeah. right? And the third lesson we learned today from Surah Kahf was the saying of Insha Allah. Whenever we plan something, we say Insha Allah. Okay, so these are the three lessons, and I'll quiz you on these lessons next time, Insha Allah, and we'll continue with Surah Kahf, right? I'll quiz you just up to the much that I've. Uh, Read out to you the translation. I'm gonna mute myself because I'm gonna put my uh, screen to be visible for my kids as well. So you guys have how much time do you want? Thirty. No, thirty. Ma, I'm not giving you thirty minutes. Thirty. No, thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah. How much time do you need for this sketch? Um, Hamid said he needs twenty. 
I think I might take like 15. Mm -hmm. Or 20. Okay, do a good job. So I'll give you guys... Oops. 30. 30. 25. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right. She doesn't want to do 30. Okay, 25 minutes? Yes, sir. Is that okay? No one is here. Yeah. Okay. So if you are not done, then we'll see, inshallah. Then we can have uh, 25 more. So I'm going to... Okay. One, two, three, go. Yes, Mama? Um. How many minutes do you think you'll be muted for? I gave you 25 minutes. So I want you to do a good job, not a half-hearted one. Don't rush it. And follow the details. Like I want you to have, uh, you know, look at the inner petals and the outlines. Look at it carefully. Look at them carefully. Don't rush it. Like don't do a quick, quick one. And tomorrow, tomorrow I'll draw with you. Tomorrow I'll draw on the screen with you. But today you have to draw it and I want to see how's your sketching. Inshallah. Okay, now I'm going to mute myself and then you have 25 minutes. I'm going to, yes, put on the timer. So okay. I'll see you in 25 minutes, Inshallah.